Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. I'm Anton, and today I'm going to show you guys how to set up the ultimate R4 card, filled with emulators and apps. This card setup will remove time bombs entirely, and allow you to play your favorite DS game backups once again. All of this will apply to the R4 SDHC type cards, but you can also try others too. You also do not need custom firmware on your system to run the R4 card. So anyways, before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future content from the channel, and let's get started. So for this tutorial, you will need a computer or device that reads and writes to a micro SD card. You must have an SD card. 16GB is recommended, you can also go with 8GB, but obviously the larger card that you use, the more files will fit inside. But since most of DS files and the ones that we'll be downloading in this video are quite small, a large card isn't necessary. You will need a Nintendo DS, 3DS, or 2DS system of some kind. This is the one that I'm going to be using for the tutorial. Since this specific R4 setup will bypass time bombs, you can use a card from any year. But for this tutorial, I'll be using a 2019 card, but I will demonstrate on a 2018 card just to show you guys that it works. I will also leave some links in the description where you can get some of these R4 cards. And finally, you will need an R4 SDHC type card. I will also leave some links in the description where you can get some of these R4 cards. First, you'll need to go down into the description and go to the SD card formatter download page. Select your operating system, then scroll down to press the accept button. Once you've done that, the file should start downloading. Once it has been downloaded, open up the program. This menu will pop up. What you will want to do is select your drive, and then select overwrite format. This will delete all the files on your SD card. So if you already have any important files on your SD card, you might want to back them up first. Press format and the process will begin. And if you don't do this step, you may find that DS games don't work at all. Once everything has finished, you can then close the program and then head back to the description of this video. Next, go to the section that says R4 Files. This will bring you to a mega download page. So just to be clear, there are no licensed ROMs or games located in this download. This just contains unofficial emulators and applications. Once the pack has been downloaded, you'll want to extract the zip file using the Unarchiver for Mac or 7-Zip or WinWare for Windows. Once everything has been extracted, you want to open up the pack and once you're at the root of the SD card, you want to select everything or just press Ctrl A. Now drag and drop all these files into your SD card. All DS games go in the games folder and all other ROMs go in their dedicated folders also. Once you're finished putting all your ROMs in your card, then you can just eject the card and insert it in your DS or 3DS R4 card. Put the R4 card in your system, power up your console and you should see this icon. Now if everything was done correctly, you should see this here menu. This is called the YS menu. First we've got the apps folder. This is basically where you want to put all your homebrew apps. Since there aren't many useful applications, and some require more work to set up than others, I just decided to include Colors. Colors is a simple drawing app that allows for pressure sensitivity on older DS hardware. So definitely check it out, and I think it's a pretty cool application. Next we have the DS games, which should be in your games folder. You can easily access the cheats and other options that you would have in the default R4 card menu. Next we've got emulators, and I've included quite a lot of them for many different systems. We've got NESDS for NES emulation, S8DS for Sega Master System and Game Gear, SNEMULE DS for Super Nintendo emulation, Genesis DS for Sega Genesis, Stella DS for Atari 2600, Lane Boy for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and finally GBA Runner 2 for, you guessed it, Game Boy Advance. The newest emulator this time included in the pack is GBA Runner 2, which is extremely easy to use and works great. This isn't actually emulation, in fact it's just utilizing the DS's GBA hardware. There are some glitches here and there, especially with sound sync issues, but you can access settings by pressing the R button to configure it to your liking. But overall, it's very impressive at how accurate it is to the Game Boy Advance. And this kind of removes the purpose of having the Ambassador program because you can just play all the Game Boy Advance games that you want on an R4 card on any system. So it's incredible. Honestly, a little surreal. And with the YS menu, it makes it really simple to access. You can even find more emulators, homebrew games, and apps on gamebrew.org. I'll leave it in the description as well. 
Now, when it comes to ROMs, I cannot tell you exactly where to find them, but a quick Google search might prove successful. Just make sure that you personally own the licensed games that you put on your R4 card. Now, just like I mentioned before, I'm going to show you guys that the Time Bomb Bypass, in fact, works. I'm going to be using a 2018 card, but what I'm going to do is go to the DS Time slash Date section. Now I can just move the years forward, so yeah, that seems that seems good enough. Now let's boot up the card, and there we go, it works. This shouldn't be possible, as most R4 cards last between 2-3 to three years, maybe even 5, it all depends. The reason time bombs exist are for companies to try and sell you new ones, so now that we can do this, it makes it so that way you don't need to buy a new one. And there's pretty much no difference between 2019 to 2018 as far as hardware is concerned. If you're looking to customize your R4 card with skins, look no further than the skin pack in the description. To insert a brand new theme, all you need to do is drag and drop the BMP images and the ysmenu.ini files and replace them with the ones that are already in the TT menu folder. Once you've done that, the theme should be applied, and now you should see your skin inside your R4 card. Some DS games may have errors. This usually happens to files that are corrupted. Now if you're having no luck with getting any working, then it may be either your SD card or the R4 card. As long as you reformat the micro SD card, then you shouldn't run into any issues. You may see a white screen with an icon that says card with a question mark. If this happens, that could mean that the R4 card is either incompatible with the software on it, or your SD card isn't in all the way in your R4 card, which usually tends to happen. If you have multiple systems, make sure to test the R4 card on all of them, because you may get a different result on one than the other. And anyway guys, that's about it for the video. If you did enjoy it, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future videos on the channel. And of course, if you need any help, make sure to comment down below. I may not be able to respond to every single comment depending on how many there are, so I would definitely appreciate it if everyone could help each other out. And I will see you guys in the next one.